I can't tell you when I figured out that I was trans. There was no light bulb moment, no flash of understanding. Instead, I was left with the slow realization that I was not the girl that everyone had assumed I was. There were little flickers, moments in my childhood, which foreshadowed me being gender nonconforming. I remember in fourth grade asking my parents if I could wear boy clothes. I got some shorts and a polo shirt. I was very stylish. I cut my hair. I remember at a camp later that year, someone saw me from behind, saw my short, scraggly hair, my semi-masculine clothing, and assumed I was a boy. I was ecstatic. It wasn't even necessarily being called a boy, but just not being automatically assumed to be a girl felt amazing. Eventually, I looked around. I noticed the disconnect between me and the other girls in my class. I grew out my hair again. I started wearing more traditionally feminine clothing. But there was always something a little bit off, unnatural. Although I can't tell you when I came out as trans, when I figured out I was trans, I can tell you when I came out. It was Trans Day of Visibility in 2016. Within the safe confines of a Jewish after-school program in Oakland, I started to sell some of my closest friends. Most of them were queer themselves. They were extremely accepting. But telling my school friends, my parents, that was a different story. Telling my parents was kind of terrifying, which can come as a shock to some people. I happen to have two moms, and they are absolutely amazing, but they didn't really understand my identity. They didn't always use the correct name or pronouns. They still don't to this day, consistently at least. Um, and overall, they just didn't understand what I was doing. But that makes sense. Not a lot of people are talking about gender, specifically about trans people. And they had a lot more time to get used to my old name and pronouns than my new ones. So what is gender? It's pretty complex. Thankfully, more and more people are starting to talk about it in media, science, education. So gender is made up of a few different dimensions. There's your identity, your expression, and your sex assigned at birth, or your biological sex. Your identity is how you see yourself. It's your name, your pronouns, how you see you. Your expression is how you show that to the rest of the world. That can be through your clothes, your hair, if you wear makeup. It's how you present yourself to everyone else. Your biological sex is your physical anatomy. It's your physical sex characteristics, your hormones, your chromosomes, all of your body. It's very clinical, your biology. This is where the difference between sex and gender comes in. Sex is your biological, physical body. Gender is your identity or the intersection between these three dimensions. It depends on the context. When you can define these three dimensions, you can define your gender. This is also where the difference between being trans and cis comes from. Cis, short for cisgender, is when your identity matches your sex assigned at birth. Maybe you were born with male genitalia and a testosterone in your body and a Y chromosome, and you identify as a man. Then you would be cis. The opposite side to this is identifying as trans or transgender. That's when your identity and your sex assigned at birth do not match. There are binary trans people, people who identify with the two prominent genders within our society, man and woman. This can be someone who was assigned female at birth but identifies as a man, or assigned male at birth but identifies as a woman. There's also non-binary people. Those are people who don't identify with the traditional gender binary of man and woman. They can identify as both, neither, somewhere in between, there is an entire spectrum of gender identities under the non-binary umbrella. So school is really hard. <laughs> between social pressures, schoolwork, extracurricul extracurriculars, there's a lot of things that the average everyday student has to deal with. But trans students have an extra layer of anxiety and stress just because of who they are. School is dominated by gender, whether that be in PE classrooms, in sports, in theater programs, everyday life is filled with gender at school. Only 14 states in DC have written legal protection from discrimination against students based on sexual orientation and gender identity. That means that places that are necessary for trans students to feel comfortable, like gender neutral bathrooms or locker rooms, are often void in these spaces. Thankfully, here at Moreau, we happen to have a gender neutral bathroom, but it's often a floor away from my classes and it's not very convenient. So even though we do have the facilities, they aren't accessible. Schools can also be home to a lot of misunderstandings about the queer community, and therefore can be home to a lot of slurs. 
Slurs show that someone recognizes the weight of the history of oppression of the queer community and doesn't care about it. Intentionally or not, using a slur shows the queer community that they are not welcome in a space and that their humanity is not being respected. Conversion therapy is often too common a reality for young queer and trans people. Currently, only 15 states in DC have banned conversion therapy. Conversion therapy is the practice of using aversive treatments in order to treat a young queer trans person into being cisgender and heterosexual. It's a process based on destroying someone and stripping them of their humanity so they can be built back up to, fix, to fit an unnecessary standard. Conversion therapy also has long-lasting psychological and emotional effects, and this can be seen in the statistics. People in conversion therapy are eight times more likely to have attempted to commit suicide. Conversion therapy is intentionally creating trauma in someone, usually a child, just so they can fit an unnecessary norm. From past research, it has also been concluded that conversion therapy does not work whatsoever. Trans and non-binary people have existed forever, and for as long as they've existed, they've been alienated from society in one way or another. There is very little active legal protection of trans people in the workplace. 17 states have no legal protection whatsoever. And of the places that do, their effects for, queer, for specifically trans people can be negated through bathroom bills and other things sim similar. Bathroom bills are bills which force people to use the bathroom aligning with their sex assigned at birth and not their gender identity. So even if there is protection for queer people, its effects can be negated for trans people. Being trans is incredibly difficult from finding a bathroom that you feel comfortable in to the threat of physical violence. There is the misconception that people decide to be trans. Although the science of gender is hotly debated, I can attest to the fact that being trans is incredibly hard. When you come out, you risk alienating your family, your friends, you could lose your job or your home, you risk your physical, mental, and emotional health. You risk your life. A big part of being trans is dealing with gender dysphoria. Gender dysphoria is the distress that's created by having your biological sex and your gender identity not align. It can manifest itself in a few different ways. There's body dysphoria, which is when your physical characteristics don't match your gender identity and that causes tension, or social dysphoria, which is the tension created by others misgendering you, using the wrong name or pronouns. Some people, to alleviate dysphoria, will go through different types of transitions, this can be changing the name that you use or the pronouns that you use, changing your gender marker on your driver's license or your passport, growing your hair out, cutting your hair, um, and tons more. Some trans people go through a more clinical transition. This can be using things like hormone replacement therapy or HRT, which is something that I've done. Some trans people get surgeries. Transition is highly individual and changes from person to person. Not only do trans people have to face the emotional dysphoria created by our own bodies, we also have to face the external world. Only last year, 26 trans people were shot or fatally killed by other violent means. From the years 2013 to 2017, 102 trans people were murdered. 85% were people of color, and 86% were women. These statistics are not a coincidence. In an ideal world, young trans kids aren't afraid to go to the bathroom at school. You aren't at risk for being stripped of your humanity just because of who you are. You can't lose your job or your home just for your identity. Trans women of color are not murdered on the streets just for walking down them. There are approximately 1.4 million trans people in the United States today, and that number is not declining. We need to make space, provide acceptance, understanding, and love to this community. So what can you do it? What can you do about it? How can you be a trans ally in your everyday life? The word ally is thrown around a lot, but there are tons of small actions that you can take in order to help support this community. One of the biggest things is introducing yourself with your pronouns. Your pronouns, also called your preferred gender pronouns or your PGPs, are the pronouns that you like use in reference to yourself. Maybe you identify as a woman and you use she, her pronouns. If I were to introduce myself to you, I'd say hi, my name is Max, and I use they, them, or he, him pronouns. I've always found this to be a marker that the person I'm talking to is safe. 
even if you don't know everything about the trans community, it shows that you're accepting and that you're willing to learn. Another big thing that you can do is support queer and trans creators, whether this be musicians, filmmakers, dancers, actors. There are tons of amazing queer content creators that you can support and follow. People like Kim Petras, Laverne Cox, Ryan Casada. There is a misconception about being an ally that you have to know everything. You don't have to know everything. I don't know everything. Gender is incredibly complicated, and we're learning more and more every day. You're allowed to ask questions, but you also need to respect boundaries. I happen to be incredibly open about my experience, and I've spent a lot of time learning about different trans people's identities and their own experiences, and I happen to be a very active part of the LGBT community. But that's just me. Not all trans people are going to feel comfortable talking about their identity. Gender is incredibly personal, and you have to respect when they don't feel comfortable talking about it. In order to truly accept trans people, we need to reevaluate the way we think about gender. Gender is complex and fluid and individual and social and affects everything we do on a daily basis. And just accepting that held so much power. Knowing that not everyone falls into the binary of pink and blue, superheroes and princesses, and while there's nothing wrong with those boxes, they just aren't the only ones. When we can recognize this, we accept and welcome the trans community and make a space for them. When we can understand the complexity of gender, truly, we'll have a better world for everyone, trans and cis people alike. And while it can be hard, I hope we can get to a place where finding our identity is an experience that can strengthen our connection to one another. Thank you.